Hello everybody, it's good to see you again. And we've been going through the book of Daniel and what we're up to now is chapter seven. And it's God's kingdom who is everlasting. Him and his kingdom are everlasting and those that are with him. And the beasts, those who do not want a changed heart, but want to be like an animal and separate from God, they are going to perish, those who are persecuting those that are with God, and their dominion and their lives will perish. But those with God will have everlasting life. With what we're talking about with Daniel, we're looking at how Greece broke up into four different sections. We have the red, that brown, the yellow, kind of a bluish color. We can see how Alexander the Great gets his power and goes and makes a huge kingdom. Then his power is broken and goes into basically four different kings, which would be Cassander, Lysimachus, Seleucus, and Ptolemy. And then we have these battles between the north and the south, which will be the Seleucid Empire, the Greeks. These are all Greeks, and he's in the yellow. And then Ptolemy is the blue in the Egypt, and in between them was Jerusalem. But really, all this stuff talking about kingdoms is pointing to the time that the Christ, the Savior, would come in. And as we're looking, we've gone through Daniel chapter 1, where they are prepared be, to go before the king. They go from Jerusalem, being captive, taken into Babylon, serving the king. And then 2 through 7 are in Aramaic, chapter 2, and then 3 and 6, where we see the salvation of God, 4 and 5, where we see the rule, the dominion, the kingdom of God, his writing, his hand writing on the wall. So we're seeing his rule in his hand. 7 goes along with chapter 2, because 2 and 7 are both talking about kingdoms, and chapter 7 is also really good to go along with chapter 8, which is also talking about a little horn of power. What we're going to be talking about today is a power, a little horn that's within the fourth kingdom, which would be the Roman era that's persecuting the saints, those that who, who are with God. Where in chapter 8, we're going to be talking about a little horn who is persecuting those with God that was in the Grecian empires. We're going to have chapter 9 that, that goes over, over to the 70 weeks pointing towards Christ. And then we're going to see this vision of Christ like we see in Revelations in chapter 10. And then 11 is going to go into a deeper part of these battles with the little horn in the Grecian Empire. And then this final rule of God. But all of this is pointing towards Jesus. Daniel 7, 1. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon... Daniel had a dream and vision of his head while on his bed. Then he wrote down the dream, telling the main facts. Daniel spoke, saying, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of heaven were stirring up the great sea. Well, we can see right here Belshazzar, son of Nabonidus, and he fell in 539 B.C. And remember, we saw him as that last ruling king, in Daniel chapter 5, where we had the handwriting on the wall. And a lot of times you'll see the sea as kind of an example of those of the world, where the land is often uh, like Israel. And four great beasts came up from the sea, each one different from the other. The first was like a lion. He had eagle's wings. I watched till his wings were plucked off. And it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand on two feet like a man, and a man's heart or mind was given to it. So now that's interesting about this first beast, because it was given a heart, a mind of a man. And Nebuchadnezzar, he did see that God, this God of Daniel was a true God, a holy God and a living God. Now, the Babylonian rebelled under Nabopolassar in alliance with the Medes and the Persians, the Scythians and the Sumerians also. And they sacked the city of Nineveh in 612 B.C. So you're seeing how the 
the Babylonians came after the Assyrians, and then the Neo-Babylonian period ended with the reign of Nabonidus in 539 B.C., and that's where Belshazzar, the second rule there, his son, was taken and killed that night. Here we can look at how the Babylonian rule at that time was going, where we had Nabopolassar, Nebuchadnezzar, Evil Merodach, Nurgle Sherezer, Labashi Marduk, Nabonidus, and then his son uh, Belshazzar. Now the second beast in Daniel 7, 5. And suddenly another beast, a second like a bear. It was raised up on one side and had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth. And they said thus to it, Arise, devour much flesh. So interesting. Now one side of it's higher than the other. And you'll see with the the Persian Empire, the Medes and the Persians, chapter 8, we're going to see how one horn is higher than the other with the Medes and the Persians. So that would be the Persians higher than the Medes. Here they're devouring three ribs, which may indicate how they came into power by defeating the Medes, Lydia, and the Neo-Babylonian Empire. And when they established their Archimanid Empire with the conquest of Babylon in 539 BC. And after this I looked, and there was another like a leopard, which had on its back four wings of a bird. The beast also had four heads, and dominion was given to it. So this third beast, a leopard, going very fast, four heads and these wings, so that makes it very fast. Now interesting to see that Alexander the Great ended up going to basically his Grecian empire got broken into four different heads. And this is something I just saw off of Wikipedia. It says, Alexander the Great, admirer of Cyrus the Great, he was the Persian king before, conquered most of the empire by 330 BC. During his youth, Alexander was tutored by Aristotle until age 16. After Philip's assassination, Philip, his, his father, in 336 B.C., he succeeded his father to the throne and inherited a strong kingdom and an experienced army. Alexander was awarded the generalship of Greece and used his authority to launch his father's Pan-Hellenic project to lead the Greeks in the conquest of Persia. In 334 B.C., he invaded the Archimanid Empire, which is a Persian empire. Okay, with Alexander the Great, I was reading in the book of Josephus how he was looking at the history saying that actually when Alexander the Great came into Jerusalem and he saw the priest there and the priest thought that they were going to get sacked and the people there and even the, the guys that were with Alexander the Great thought they were going to sack this city. But they didn't because when Alexander the Great got there, he saw that priest and saw that the God of that priest had directed him in his conquest. So he let Jerusalem go and they had a good relationship with Jerusalem. The Grecian Empire did for most of this time until they came to Antiochus the fourth, who called himself Epiphanes, which means God manifest, and then they had a problem there. So it's interesting how God is in charge of the nations. Okay, let's go to Daniel 8.20, because this will help us look at this Greek kingdom also. It's similar. So we're jumping over to 8.20 real quick. And it says, The ram which you saw having two horns, they are the kings of Media and Persia. And the male goat is the king of Greece. The large horn is between its eyes, and it's the first king. As for the broken horn and the four that stood up in its place, four kingdoms shall arise out of that nation, but not with its power. Well, it didn't go to the son of Alexander, and it didn't go to his half-brother either. It, the power actually went to, to generals, Cassander, Lysimachus, or Lysimachus, and Seleucus above Israel, and Ptolemy that was down in Egypt. Okay, let's go back to the fourth beast, Daniel 7, 7. After this I saw in the night vision, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, exceedingly strong. 
It had huge iron teeth. It was devouring, breaking in pieces, and trampling the residue. And that word residue means the rest or remainder with its feet. It was different from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. And horns usually symbolize power. If we go back and look at Daniel 2, because remember 2 and 7 kind of go together, let's look at what it says here about the fourth kingdom. In Daniel 2.40, And the fourth kingdom shall be as strong as iron, inasmuch as iron breaks in pieces and shatters everything. And like iron that crushes, that kingdom will break in pieces and crush all others. Whereas you saw the feet and toes partly of potter's clay and partly of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, yet the strength of the iron shall be in it. Just as you saw the iron mixed with ceramic clay, and as the toes of the feet were partly of iron and partly of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly fragile. As you saw iron mixed with ceramic clay, they will mingle with the seed of men. But they will not adhere to one another, just as iron does not mix with clay. Can we look at what that kind of breaks down to? So we're looking at this fourth kingdom as we're shown in chapter 2. And so we can understand a little bit more in this chapter 7. It says, The fourth kingdom, strong as iron. That kingdom will break in pieces and crush all the others. And then the feet and toes. The kingdom shall be divided. And then it's, it's iron and partly clay. Very strong. And this one that we see in 7 has claws uh, that are very strong too. So it says, partly strong, partly fragile, iron mixed with ceramic clay. They will mingle with the seed of men. So it seems like you have the the men and the strength of the kingdom mingling together, yet they will not adhere to one another, just as iron does not mix with clay. Okay, maybe that can help us understand a little bit. And then, um, you know, when we were looking back at chapter two with the kingdoms of metals and notice how the legs i don't know we can look at the roman empire we had a western and eastern you know it's kind of split but anyway it said that this kingdom is divided anyway and just that the kingdom is a divided kingdom uh definitely has a part of it so again looking at this how we have babylon the Medes and the Persians, the Greeks and the Romans. And we're seeing how we're looking at chapter 2, the kingdoms as metals, but yet this everlasting kingdom, and then the kingdoms as beasts, and yet there's going to be an everlasting kingdom. So back to Daniel 7, 8. I was considering the horns, and there was another horn, a little one coming up among them before whom three of the first horns were plucked out by the roots. And there in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking pompous words. We're starting to look at one of the powers out of all of these other powers. Daniel 7, 9. I watched till thrones were put in place and the Ancient of Days was seated. His garment was white as snow and the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was a fiery flame, its wheels a burning fire. His hair was like pure wool. It says garments white as snow. Well, wool is white. And, you know, I've had some of the black Israelites uh, try to tell me that, see, this is talking about him being a black man. Well, it's not really talking about being a black man. God made all men, and so... It's nothing that Jesus was showing was about race at all. It's not about race, but it's about the heart. And when we see this uh, having wheels, a burning fire, well, this wheels on the throne, of course, we know that this throne is moving because this heaven is going to move down. It's going to be renewed. The earth is going to be renewed. Uh, and new heaven is going to set down on a new earth. So we're talking about kingdoms. And I don't know if that's why we have wheels, but that is showing movement. 
a fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. A thousand thousands ministered to him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated and the books were opened. So here we see God uh, and people that have turned towards God turning to him. And there are books opened. And of course, we do know that um, the book of life and life is in Christ. Daniel 7.11 we're looking at the body of the fourth beast destroyed and the rest of the beast prolonged for a time. I watched then because of the sound of the pompous words which the horn was speaking. I watched till the beast was slain and its body destroyed and given to the burning flame. As the rest of the beast, they had their dominion taken away. Yet their lives or living were prolonged or given for a season and a time. These living would go on for a bit of time and God is the one who determines the times and seasons. Daniel 7 13 we're seeing here where Christ ascending in into heaven because that's where Daniel is seeing this vision from and if we look back to Acts 1 6 remember how we saw there Jesus was actually going up into heaven but Daniel's seeing it from a different perspective it appears it says I was watching in the night visions and behold one like the son of man coming with the clouds of heaven he came to the ancient of days and they brought him near before him then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples nations and languages should serve him his dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom the one which shall not be destroyed. Well, who was given dominion and glory and kingdom? That would be Christ and all peoples can turn to him and have life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life and no one goes to the Father except through me. And this is great because, you know, if um, we are lost we need to turn back to God turn to him repent of our sins because he died with those so they could be wiped out and Christ is risen with the father so that where he is we can be also see we turn to Christ we have forgiveness forgiveness of sins and we are seated with him in heavenly places but uh you know, there's a sense of having that now, but there's going to be a greater sense of having that complete later. Now, there's a couple things I wanted to look at that I thought might be kind of interesting. If we go back to Matthew 21, 33, Jesus was telling a parable of a vineyard. Let's look at what it says. There was a certain landowner who planted a vineyard and set a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. And he leased it to the vine dressers and went into a far country. Now, when the vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the vine dressers that they might receive its fruit. And the vine dressers took his servants, beat one, killed one, and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants more than the first, and they did likewise to them. Then, last of all, he sent his son to them, saying, They'll respect my son. But when the vine dresser saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let's kill him and seize his inheritance. So they took him and they cast him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those vine dressers? Well, they said to Jesus, He will destroy those wicked men miserably and lease his vineyard to other vine dressers who will render to him the fruits in their seasons. Jesus said to them, Have you not read the scriptures? The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a nation bearing the fruits of it. And whoever falls on this stone will be broken, but on whomever it falls, it will grind him to powder. Now when the chief priests and Pharisees heard this parable, they perceived that he was speaking of them. But when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitudes because they took him for a prophet. 
and remember that Moses, see, he was told by God that God would send one like him, a prophet, a prophet cannot lie, and to speak the truth, would speak the words of God that they would hear, and that's who they should listen to. They shouldn't listen to um, all these other people who are false, uh, they're speaking to the dead, all these other things, and a prophet who speaks something that is a lie, you should not be afraid of them, but we should fear God. That's the beginning of wisdom. Okay, back to Daniel 7:15. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit within my body, and the vision of my head troubled me. See, don't think that you're the only one that's had troubled times, because Daniel, he sure is thinking about all these things. I came near to one of those who stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made known to me the interpretation of these things. Those great beasts, which are four, are four kings, which arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Then I wish to know the truth about the fourth beast, which was different from all the others, exceedingly dreadful, with its teeth of iron and its nails of bronze, which devoured broken pieces and trampled the residue with its feet. Remember, residue means the rest or the remainder. And the ten horns that were on its head. And the other horn which came up, before which three fell. Namely, that horn which had eyes and a mouth which spoke pompous words, whose appearance was greater than his fellows. So we're looking at the fourth beast, the ten horns, and then that one horn. So let's look at the little horn of the fourth beast who wars on the saints. I was watching, and the same horn was making war against the saints and prevailing against them. Until the Ancient of Days came, and a judgment was made in favor of the saints of the Most High, and the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom. Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be a fourth kingdom on earth, which shall be different from all other kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth, trample it, and break it to pieces. So this thing, which shall be different, it can be different or change or alter, and uh, it can be devour, which can be eat or accuse or devour, and trample or thresh and break, crumble and crush. Okay, so then look at this about the ten horns of the beast. The ten horns are ten kings. Who shall arise from this kingdom and another shall rise after them he shall be different from the first ones and shall subdue three kings so this subdue it is corresponding to another word which means a base humble put down subdue so now we'll look at this little horn of the fourth beast and his dominion destroyed daniel 7 25 he shall speak pompous words against the most high shall persecute the saints of the Most High, and shall intend to change times and laws. Well, of course, God is the one who changes times. Persecute, he's going to persecute saints, which is going to, that means to wear out. Then the saints shall be given into his hand, and hand or power, for a time and a times and a half time. Well, I don't know what this time frame is. Well, when you have a one time and then times is plural, like two times. A one and a two is three, and then a half time, three and a half. So uh, I don't know what that three and a half means, whether it just means how Jesus was preaching the gospel for three and a half years, and then that, I don't know if this three and a half represents the time that the gospel is being preached out in the world that saints will be persecuted. I mean, we certainly are persecuted for uh, preaching the gospel. But the court shall be seated, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and destroy it forever. Now, if we go back and look at Daniel 8, we're also going to see a little horn within the Grecian powers. So within the Roman era, 
we see a persecution. And then with the Greek era, we see a persecution. And out of one of them, we're looking at Daniel 8, 9. And out of one of them came a little horn, which grew exceedingly great toward the south, toward the east, and toward the glorious land. So this horn, it appears to be Antiochus IV Epiphanes, and he's the one who fought the Maccabees when uh, the temple was desecrated, and that's where you get Hanukkah from when they restored the temple. Daniel 8.10, And it grew up to the host of heaven, and it cast down some of the host and some of the stars to the ground, and trampled them. He even exalted himself as high as the prince of the host, and by him the daily sacrifices were taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. Because of the transgression, an army was given over to the horn to oppose the daily sacrifices, and he cast truth down to the ground. He did all this and prospered. Well, Antiochus IV, he did prosper uh, until he was finally taken out. And then back to Daniel 7.27, we're going to see God's kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Then the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people, the saints of the Most High. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. This is the end of the account. As for me, Daniel, my thoughts greatly troubled me, and my countenance changed, but I kept the matter in my heart. Yeah, Daniel is greatly troubled because he has been given great vision to see some of these things that are taking place. And, of course, Daniel and his companions, they experienced some of these things as they determined in their heart not to defile their self but to be holy as God is holy. And that's what we're called to do, is to be holy as He is holy. And as we see Daniel thinking about these things, we're going to see that he's going to be given more vision on those things he's been asking about. And so we'll see that later in chapter 8 as we look at the little horn in the Grecian Empire. And as for me, I'm feeling really blessed to be able to go through the Word of God, think about it, and continue to mull it over and meditate on the words. And we're called to study, to show ourselves approved, to meditate on the word. And I think it is good for us to do that, that we can begin to read the word for ourselves and get it. And so we're not taken astray by people who want to exalt their own kingdom. Because God, there's one king, that's Jesus. He rules and reigns. And if we want to have life, life more abundantly, and an everlasting life in his kingdom, we need to follow the King, Jesus Christ. So continue to follow him, faithful to the end. God bless you.